it's a, it's a goddamn winter wonderland out here. Well, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. It's not like there's actually inches of snow, but it's starting to feel like Christmas time. It's starting to freaking feel like Christmas up in here. So for any any lifters closer to the south or the west, at least in the states, I mean, whatever. Any lifters in a warm climate, yeah. When you're when you're riding to the gym with your windows down, just cruising, you know, us us uh, northeasterners, we're grinding, we're trudging through the snow in our boots, like. Uh, like Dorian Yates to get to the gym, you know, while you guys are just enjoying the heat, you know, we're out here in the mud cold. I don't really think about it like that, but that's yeah, kind of funny. So as long as the weather doesn't get so severe that I don't make it to the gym, I kind of couldn't care less. You know, spring, winter, fall, eh, I guess I do care a little bit. I do like when it's warm. But more so just because I don't like being cold. Ish. Gotta get in the car and just go through that three minute period of blast in the heat before it actually warms up. I'm not saying it's like getting in an ice bath, but I'd say they're comparable. Maybe on two very different sides of the spectrum of coldness. But enough random yapping. Plan for back is gonna be the same as normal. But I think I want to do a lot of supersets today. Something, I don't know, something's kind of calling out to me that I want to bust out. <sighs> ah, that I want to bust out like, you know, pullovers into rows. Or maybe like, you know, light squeezing rows into pull downs. Or maybe, um, you know, I don't know. Maybe pullovers into body weight pull ups. Just kind of whatever. Just. I don't know. I do always get a good back pump. That's never really been too much of an issue for me. But I will kind of say sometimes, or maybe not sometimes, but doing a lot of supersets. Like if I were to sit here and do like a set of really heavy seated cable rows and then jump straight into light pull downs <sighs> oh my god if i were to do that i know for a fact i'd probably get a little bit more pumped than just doing you know a set of rows and then waiting a few minutes before doing just a dedicated set of pull downs so that's not like a cut and dry rule but for whatever reason i kind of want to have a very I don't want to say volume-based, because I'm still going to do the same kind of like six-ish sets, you know, as many as I kind of feel I need, but you know, I feel like I've been doing a lot of straight sets, I kind of want to change it up a touch. I used to almost make every set, well, I used to make every set a drop set, so no matter what I was doing, like my workout would look pretty much the same as it does now. Oh, <laughs> fuck. I just woke up from a nap before I took the pre, but <clears throat> my workout would look pretty much the same as it does now. But instead of just doing a normal set and like, you know, let's say reach failure plus partials at like, you know, 12 reps or 15 reps, then instead of just racking it, you know, taking a rest, I would just drop the weight by half and burn out with another 10 or 15. You know, and I did that for Jeez, for a long time when I was starting out. That was probably like the majority of my second year of training style. Because in my mind, I always thought, okay, sure, I just did a good set. Like, let's uh, let's just take curls for example. I just did a pretty good set of curls. Let's say I was curling like the 40s at the time. And I could do you know, 12 reps, moderate, well, not even moderate, just 12 clean reps to failure. In my mind, I'm thinking, I've still got more left in the tank. Sure, I can't curl the 40s anymore. But if I grab the 25s, I can do another 10 reps. You know? I kind of maybe phased out of that mentality. Because then, 
you know, where's the limit? You know, like, okay, sure, I can't do the 25s anymore, but now I can do the 15s. Okay, now I can do the 10s. Now I can do the 5s. Okay, now I can just do some body weight curls <laughs> and just curl nothing. You know, uh, so I'm not necessarily sure that's kind of the answer. So as of late, I've been kind of sticking towards just doing a normal straight set. And I feel like hitting your maximum effort, your maximum intensity, aka basically failure with a specific weight, and then that's your set. I think that's a good way to go about it. But, again, in the spirit of kind of changing things up and making sure the training doesn't get stale, and maybe not just the training, but the stimulus for whatever I'm hitting, I want to add some different styles every so often. Sometimes have workouts that look completely different than even the workout that I just did the last back day. So, not only for the potential muscular benefits of doing different workouts to stimulate my back in different ways and you know, maybe induce some more growth, but it's also just fun. Right? If you've lifted for long enough and you've watched enough TikTok videos and workout clips, honestly just watching people's workout videos, right? if you're into lifting, even if you just talk about lifting around your phone, it's going to pick up that that's what you're into and it's going to show you these videos. Just by kind of being exposed to that for long enough. You should get enough of what I'd almost want to call like your exercise slash training vocabulary or I don't want to say appendix, but whatever. You should know a lot of different exercises and styles and drop sets and supersets and stuff like that. So once you know them, you can just try them out in all sorts of different combinations. I'm sure that if every time I came into the gym, I did the exact same back workout and the exact same chest day, the same leg day, the exact same arm day. If I did them the exact same week after week after week, I mean, I'd probably get tired of it. I think I'd probably still do it if I thought that was the best method because uh, you know, I'm an obsessed freak. But it is way more fun to change it up. I think that people who are often kind of maybe plagued by the boredom of repeating the same workout split over and over, I think that they just need to kind of change their workouts up a little more. If you have a good variety of chest days, or maybe you, well, you know, insert any lift, then I don't really see how you could get tired of your workout split. I mean, the order in which you hit muscles, it's kind of arbitrary. It'll only feel repetitive if every lift is the same. So if you've got different lifts and you, you know, change it up, you're not going to get tired and you can just stick to the same split for you know, however long you freaking want. So I think if you kind of have a stale routine, and maybe this is up to you to reflect upon and think, yeah, I guess I have been doing the same stuff every time. Then it would make sense that you would be like, oh, I'm so tired of push pull legs. Now I want to try the Arnold split. Uh, I, I want to try a half, I want to try a full body, you know, that's, uh, that's kind of what I think about there. But just at a glance into the window, this place looks pretty freaking dead. I mean, 7 o'clock, Monday night, plus it's cold. I'm sure people want to be nice and cozy at home. Wrong! Come on, get real. Get freaking real. If that was... If you're watching this and yesterday you took off because you were kind of chilly, dude, what... Oh, jeez, man. We're going to have to have a serious discussion after class. All right, just uh, just hang back while everyone else leaves. I'm going to get warmed up and get in there. See what that first working set ends up being. I'd probably say that this hammer strength row is like the equivalent of a leg press for back. Uh, because the weight isn't that heavy. Like if you were to try to do, I mean, if I was to try to do a six plate bent over barbell row, for one thing, I'd probably not even be able to move it. But also, well, I think that's pretty much it. But with this machine, you can throw around a lot of weight to the point where I almost kind of avoid doing this lift just because it takes so much work to actually load the plates. But it is a pretty good row and I like the feel of it. So it's kind of worth it in that sense. But I think I'm going to approach today's back day 
with a few really heavy sets here, and then I'll move into more you know, drop sets, lighter squeezing stuff afterwards. This is usually kind of what I warm out my chest days like. That might be a little too heavy. Good opener in terms of tension on my lats and mid traps, but let's drop a plate for the next one. Let's move on to something else, but those are pretty good. They don't have a dedicated, like, straight up lap pull down here. They're getting one. I hear through the grapevine that there are going to be some upgrades around here, which, I mean, that's just music to my ears. That's just an unreleased yeet featuring Travis Scott to my ears. But this pull down machine isn't that bad either. It's a little bit light weight wise, but I've already done some heavy ass rows. I want to do a squeezing movement. So, differing from my typical fucking just like brutish reps throwing the shit around, trying to have a crazy amount of tension on my lats as possible. I'll be a bit more controlled. And at the bottom of each rep, at least when I'm fresh, I want to feel like I'm just pulling my elbows towards my spine. Obviously, they'll run into my lats and whatever else, but that's the mental cue I'm imagining. At least one more with a drop set. That was pretty good. Very good contrast to those heavier rows. I don't really know what I want to fucking do now. More pull downs, more rows, maybe pull overs. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make a decision once I've caught my breath. I've got a, I'd say I have a good relationship with this machine. It, uh, it, I got one little gripe with it. And what happens is 
The only reason I even have it is because I'm an ego lifter at heart. And the stack on this machine is actually really Like I could do a 10 rep, a 15 rep set, but it's kind of dirty. It's kind of just throwing the weight around. So at this point in the workout, just about a little more than half the stack, that'll suffice. And instead of a real, you know, jerky kind of throw the weight around set, I'll be pretty methodical and really try to make each rep burn. I like that, but let's just do one. Okay, so I think I'm pretty certain based on feeling fatigue, just knowing how many sets I've done already, how pumped I feel. I think we're in the end game. So I'm gonna go for a superset style potential finisher. And if after this set, if I'm satisfied, then we can just go check the pump. But if I think I'll get a little bit more out of doing another one, or maybe I finish the set and I feel like doing a whole new movement entirely, then that's what I'll do. But, you know, don't try to just copy some random workout style or reps or exercise selection and order or whatever, just like blindly. You know, I'm just doing all this random shit because I know it's gonna feel good for me specifically. I'm not picking all these movements and all these styles because I think, okay, this is what the general lifter is gonna benefit the most from. Like this is not necessarily, well actually no, not even a little. Apart from some instances where I do try to like tell you a specific tip or like fundamental idea about lifting. These, apart from maybe just intensity, these are not instructional videos. This is more like uh, just documentation of what ends up going down. But let's see if this will be the ender. Oh wait, what the fuck? I didn't even say what I was gonna do. So five reps on the right arm and then five on the left of just single arm pull downs. So lat biased. And then I'll finish with AMRAP of, uh, you know, double arm seated rows. So I'll just drop the cable stack down to, I don't know, right here or so, and then really try to squeeze. That's enough. Let's just hope the yoga room is fucking open. <laughs> All right, so what was that? Only six-ish sets? Pretty good. It's just by subjective feeling, I have got no problem with those. So let's just see how we're looking pump-wise. There we go. Yeah. <sighs> so... Only one muscle group, but I think that the fact that some days are chest only and then some days are back only kind of gives the, maybe not the illusion, but it makes it seem like I only hit one muscle group once per week. And I do not stand behind that at all. That is fucking stupid, right? I do chest, back, arms, followed by legs. Uh, I kind of don't really feel the need to clarify that since if you just look at the upload schedule, I mean, it's the same shit back to back to back. 
in that order, apart from the occasional, let's just call it bump in the schedule. But that's once every four days. And that does not mean that there's like a three day rest period. And then I have like, you know, a whole, well, and then I only hit everything once a week. It just kind of repeats from there, you know, about twice a week. That is what I would go so far as to say is the sweet spot in terms of, you know, muscle hitting frequency. And I'd say a lot of people freaking agree. Push, pull, legs, Arnold split, everything twice a week. But then, I mean, just think about it. When you hit chest, the next day, you're probably not ready to hit chest again. The day after that, probably still pushing it. You might actually be able to feel yourself a little here if it was a good workout at least. But three days afterwards, so two full days of rest, I'm ready to hit chest again. And that's for all lifters across the board, except for potential, or except for potentially, uh, you know, total noobs where maybe they hit chest and they're still feeling it for a week just because they're not used to the stimulus. So twice a week, that's where it's at. Let's run through some back poses. Oh my goodness. I certainly feel pumped. Oh. 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 Whew. I'll have to review the footage. Let's see what fuck. Even doing a back double by with a back pump. Like it feels like my. <laughs> I'm just like seriously activating my traps, trying to pull my arms up into place. Oish. But all in all, back day complete. Now I just get to go home, eat, and chill. The perfect ender for the day of a lifter. Okay, so this is not from experience. I did not just bust my ass out there. But if you're leaving the gym on a cold and snowy night if I can implement some caution man I mean we're tough you know the human body can handle a lot of stuff but you know if you're above I mean any weight but let's say you're a approaching a 250 pounder such as myself if I were to slip and fall and my whole body weight were to like land backwards on my arm like trying to catch myself uh, guess what? My elbow would be given a trip to Snap City immediately. Eh, freaking immediately. So, if your feet aren't firmly planted on the ground, you're watching your step, you could get totally wrecked. And that would throw off a whole little, you know, winter season of bulking. Assuming that's your, that's your primary directive right now, which, honestly, no reason not to. I think it gets a little bit, well, it makes sense. You know, people talk about bulking over the winter time. You don't really have to be lean. You don't have to show off because obviously everybody's covered up in warm clothes. I mean, not that we really have to deal with survival, but I guess if you're bulked up in the winter time, that would just make sense. You know, if you got to survive on low rations. Maybe if you're if you're a primal. If you're following the primal tenants, then you got to worry about that. But everybody else, I mean, we got the grocery store. I think we're okay. But it makes sense. Bulk in the wintertime, get soft when nobody's going to be looking at you. And then cut during the summertime, right? You want to be lean out on the pool at the beach. Show off a pair of six-pack abs. Whoa. I don't know. Which, it makes sense. All well and good. But I think that kind of messes with people's heads because during those sort of, I don't want to, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Uh, during those transitional periods of the seasons where, you know, let's say it's springtime or maybe it's like end of summer, right? The, the maybe perhaps non-dedicated lifter who can't really pull the trigger on a bulk or a cut and stick to it, he's kind of stuck in limbo because he's like, oh crap, well, it's going to be summertime in like three months. 
I don't want to start a bulk now because then I'm going to be kind of softer later. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's... I guess I could start a cut, but uh, it's already, like, end of July. It's about to be fall soon. I think I'll... Uh, blah, blah. And then guess what? They're the same weight forever. They are the same freaking weight forever. Now, this only goes for a bulking and cutting style, which I do like. You know, I think if you do a legit bulk, then you will pack on some legit tissue over that period. You'll get a little bit softer too, but that's just the nature of the beast. And then you do maybe a two month cut, right? You actually drop your calories for a little bit and kind of burn off some of that excess body fat. And at the end of that little loop, as long as you've been training actually hard and eating your protein, I can say you're probably, you have a high probability, very high probability, of having more muscle at the end of it than you did at the beginning. Now, are you going to have more muscle than if you were to have main gained for that period of time? So let's say you do a four-month bulk and a two-month cut. Would you have gained more muscle if you just you know, ate your protein and ate in a slight surplus for that whole period of time? I couldn't tell you. you know, that's sort of something where I think you got to try it out for yourself. You know, I main gained for a long time. And now I've been bulking for a while, too. Even though those two situations aren't... They're not exactly comparable. And I think you know the reason why. But I still like fundamentally the idea of bulking. I think back if in uh, you know, high school and my freshman year of college when I was doing diving. If instead of just kind of main gaining, I had done bulks and cuts. I think I'd be a comparable size. If not, honestly... I think I'd be a bit bigger. I do seriously think that I'd probably be bigger over those three years of basically main gaining if I had done dedicated bulks and cuts. Now, the primary word there isn't bulk and cut, it's dedicated. I'm not talking about just like eh, a little bulk and maybe I get like a little bit softer, maybe I gain like five pounds over a couple of months and then I cut down. I, I'm talking like legit actually getting to a point where my body is a very different composition at the end of the bulk so that there's actually a reason to diet down to reset my system to do it again. You know, I, uh, I think a lot of people say they're bulking and a lot of people say they might be cutting, but really they're just kind of in a state of maintenance. You know? So not to, I'm not trying to say main gaining is bad. I think if you go from a total schmo, and by schmo I just mean non-lifter, <laughs> I feel like schmo is my equivalent of like muggle, like I'm just talking about gen pop, the uninitiated. But let's say you've gone from no lifting at all to maybe not even having a crazy routine, but just going into the gym like four or five times a week on a consistent basis, plus hitting your protein goals. After six months of that, man, considering the fact that you're very susceptible to gains in the beginning you're very prone to stimulation because you've never lifted weights before you can make some solid gains but at a point you're kind of going to reach those that limit of newbie gains in a way and you've got to kind of start hitting this shit a little bit more methodically so if you've been on the if you've been on the cusp of oh well should i bulk that's oh, i don't know i don't know maybe i want to cut down and then even worse if instead of not being able to pick one or the other, you have to think to yourself, well, I want to bulk up, but I don't want to lose my abs. I just got them. No. Or, oh, well, dude, I don't want to cut down. I just hit a new bench PR. If I start dieting, I'm going to lose my strength. Come on, man. Come on. You're focusing on the present. You're focusing on the present with that mentality, dude. Come on, you got to have an eye for the future. You gotta understand that every time you go into the gym, it's not just, well, unless you're just trying to maintain your build, which at some point we should all reach that level where you just, you wanna go into the gym to maintain what you built. You like where you're at. That is kind of the end goal, I think. Uh, I can't really see that for me. That's very far off in the distance beyond the horizon. But eventually, yeah, I wanna just maintain my build. So until you're at that level, each time you're going to the gym and every move that you're making, it shouldn't just be, you know, one step. 
right? It should be a setup move. Like if you're playing chess, you're not just moving your pawn because you think, oh, I think this would go nicely here, right? You're setting yourself up for moves in the future. So sure, I'm gonna get softer on this bulk. I'm gonna be less vascular. Uh, honestly, ideally, I'd be completely, all my veins would just be gone because that would mean I've eaten so much food that I've got enough body fat on my system to kind of show me that I've really bulked hard. You know? And that's not my end goal. My end goal isn't to get big and fluffy. My end goal is to get big and fucking dice like a freak. But you can't just jump straight to that. You can't just jump straight to the end goal. You know, there's steps and ups and downs and peaks and valleys which you've got to go through on the way there. You know, so I think if you're kind of worried about those immediate changes that are going to result from making a move that's actually setting yourself up for success later on, then I don't know what you got to do, man. You just need to have a little bit of a re. Blah, blah, blah. A little bit of a rewiring of your brain to kind of you know, understand the fact that sure, there's a cost to bulking up. You're going to get a little bit softer, but there's also a benefit, size and strength. Now, look, I'm here for size, of course. That's, that's priority number one. But it's cool being strong, too. It's just badass being a fucking, uh, being, a, being able to exert some serious forces out in the world. Makes you confident. But that's the benefit. And the cost is you got to eat a fuck ton of food and get kind of soft. Similarly, with dieting down, benefit, you look fucking nuts. You're going to see new striations and veins which you haven't seen before. Or fuck, man, maybe if you've never really been lean, you get your first glimpse at abs. That is fucking sick. Plus, being a little bit more um, superficial, when you cut down, your face gets more trim. You look kind of cool. You got like your jawline coming out, like you're a look, looks maxing muir, right? That's kind of that's kind of fun, but that's so that's the benefit. But the cost is oh fuck, I hit my calorie limit for the day. It's only six o'clock. Shit. Okay, I just got to drink a ton of diet soda. No more food for me. Fuck. Right? That's the cost. So you got to be able to balance those two things out. And fuck, man, maybe the maybe the benefits don't outweigh the cost and maybe you're like fuck man I don't want to cut down that's stupid I like where I'm at now if that's you then sure that ass who gives a fuck do what you want but for the guy who does want to get bigger over time you know, I think the cutting and bulking method within reason of course within reason don't get too fat and don't get too lean in the diet or else you're kind of you know you've taken your two steps forward but then if you get too soft, you're going to have a lot of body fat to deal with. Then you're taking a few steps back, setting yourself behind. And if you diet too hard, then you're going to start eating into the muscle that you work so hard to build. And so instead of a reset, right, you're nice and hungry, you're lean, you're ready to start another bulk. If you keep dieting beyond that for no reason, then you're cutting back, you're cutting back. Now you're just you know, worse off than when you started. So you do have to do it within a reason. And it is something which you are going to benefit from watching some, I mean, I want to, I literally want to say tutorial videos on how to do, like look up some shit, how to track your macros, you know, different meal plans and how to bulk and stuff like that. The more of those kind of videos you can watch and kind of understand and internalize, the better off you are going to be. And I can say that with freaking certainty. And it's not just watching these kind of videos and whatever else. You got to watch them, but also be able to apply the shit that the, you know, the big ass old lifter dude who, or whatever the guy making the video is talking about, you got to be able to apply it, see if it works. And then when it does work for you, or if you can set up a system or whatever else and have it work, then no badass. Even better, sprinkle on top. Look up some Machiavelli motivational videos of like Dorian Yates, Tom Platts, shit like that. Uh, damn. Way before my time, but get some Greg Plitt videos on your feed every time you see some shit like that give it a like save it so you see it more often you combine a ton of food hard training with those kind of videos and that kind of mentality I mean you're on a you you're taking a turn onto a one-way street to Freaksville and there is no speed limit like the fucking um, I forget you know you know what I'm talking about so get yourself on track Go hard. I'm going home to eat and probably take a nap.
I've been sleeping all day. It is, uh, I'm in heaven. So I'll fucking see you next time.